Hello, say hello, 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 hello. So welcome to the Business Plugs Mixer. Hi, go ahead and share this on your page and invite your friends, your business friends in. Today, we're going to be talking about the 20 reasons you need a business plan. So if you have business friends, then we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about why they need to invest in a business plan. And then I'm going to talk about what I'm doing tomorrow at six o'clock. So if you have a business idea that you would like to have a plan for, I'm going to help you get that. And that's what we're doing tomorrow. But today, let's talk about 20 reasons why you need a business plan. Like if you have a business, you need a business plan. It doesn't matter if it's a formal plan or if it's a notebook you've been keeping track in or if it's something written on a napkin. Because <laughs> I've had some business owners who have had their business plan written on napkins. Like it's acceptable. If you're not going to share it, you know, an informal plan will work just as long as you have a plan. Because if you don't plan, then you plan to fail. You know that old saying. So, this is an opportunity for us to talk about 20 reasons why in 2021 you need to have a business plan. So, welcome LinkedIn and welcome Facebook. My name is Linda Murray Bullard. They call me the business plug. And so, today I am plugging you in to why you need a business plan. I'm going to give you 20 good reasons. And this is not even based on my own research. I'm actually adapting it from a column that was written back in February. And I want to make sure that I credit the person that wrote it. His name is uh, David Levinsky. So David Levinsky works for or contributed to Groupthink which is groupthink.com. And he wrote this article about 20 reasons why you need a business plan in 2021. And so I am going to make sure that we cover this because I thought it's great. He even gives you a template that you can use to go buy, or you can go to sba.gov. That's S-B-A. That's Small Business Administration. Dot gov, right? You can go there and get a free business plan template. Did you know that? Yeah. So they have free, the SBA, I love them. They're the most underused, but most necessary business place for people who want to start businesses, right? So while I'm doing this, I'm talking about uh, 20 reasons why you need a business plan in 2020. So if you're on here, please say hello. <laughs> Let me know you're here. And if you're watching this in the replay, go ahead and put hashtag replay. That way I'll know that you saw it. I'm trying to type my banner. Uh, see, what's what happens when you come on early? <laughs> And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about 20 reasons why you, as a small business owner, need a business plan in 2021. That's what we're talking about today. And so I hope that you'll give me some feedback so that we can it can be a conversation because that's what I want. I imagine this being a, uh, being a conversation, you and me talking together you asking your questions, me giving you answers. And then I'll tell you about an opportunity I have for us to go over your business plan and to work through it. Like if you, a lot of times what I find is people get stuck, like they'll start on it and then they get overwhelmed. And sometimes they just need a little assistance of understanding what needs to go where. And so tomorrow at six o'clock PM Eastern time, I'm doing a business plan walkthrough. And I've put the link in this description for this video. So you can, if you're interested, then by all means, then please sign up and you'll see me again tomorrow because I do it on Zoom. I started on Facebook. It's a Facebook live, a Facebook paid live event, but I started on Facebook and then I moved it to Zoom because I find Zoom to be more flexible with the, the length of time that I plan to do it because I want to make sure all of my 
uh, students, all the people who invest in, in getting a business plan, I want to make sure that we stay on until I've answered your very last question. And for that reason, I move it from Facebook and I do it on Zoom. So yeah, so let's talk about 20 reasons why you need to have a business plan in 2021. So the first reason is to prove you're serious. Like, are you serious about having a real business? Now, let me tell you, let me tell you how this, this, is, this is really, really a timely topic because I had so many people reach out to me who are business owners who want to get in on the PPP loans, right? And they, I, I referred them to my financial people because my financial people are good at getting you to the dollars, right? A lot of times when we're filling out those PPP uh, loan information, we get denied because we don't know what goes where. And we're just guessing what, what, they, what they want from us. But if you go to a financial person, if you go to a person like a CPA, I've had some bookkeepers, I've had some people that are certified to do, you know, PPP uh, loans. I've been referring all over the place. And when they talk back to me, my financial people, they're saying, hey, look, these people have never filed a business tax. They've never filed federal business taxes. They've never filed state business taxes. They've never filed taxes. So to me, even though they are selling product and they can be, some of these companies are pretty hefty, been around a while and they've never filed businesses, business taxes. But if you're serious, if you're serious about owning a business, you need a business plan to show that you're serious. You need to think it through because what it'll do, it'll help you walk through your business idea. And there won't be any, I'm not filing taxes. Like, the reason you have a business is so that you taxes mean you made money. People are like I don't want I don't want to have a business. I don't want to get my license because I don't want to pay taxes. But baby, taxes mean that you're getting income. You don't pay taxes on zero, right? So just understanding my my millionaire friends, they're like, girl, I love paying taxes, and they you know I just don't want to pay too many, but but I enjoy paying taxes because taxes mean that I've made money. So. Think about that. Are you serious about this business idea? That's number one. The other thing is it helps you to establish your business's milestones. Like how do you get from implementing the idea until, I mean, well, excuse me, how you get, how you get started with, I have this idea and then vetting it, like going through, testing it and finding the right mix and then growing that idea. Once you find the right mix, like because what you see in your head may not be what it actually is, right? We already know that we're married to the fact that we're going to have a business. We cannot be married to how we're going to have that business because there are too many variables there. So we have the introduction of the idea. We've had a dream or somebody told us we should do this or whatever it was that kicked us off. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have that. So you, you have this idea. And then you have milestones. You count the way. Okay, I started here. What's the first milestone? Ah, I order business cards or I get my logo. You know, seeing your logo and your business cards for the first time, it is like hearing your song on the radio. So you're like, ah, you know, it's, it's real. It makes it real to you. So in order to establish your business milestones, you need a business plan. It's going to lay out those long-term milestones that are most important to the success of your business. Like, hopefully, 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 you are not here for short term. Like, hopefully, you're here for the long term. And if you're here for the long term, to paraphrase Guy Kowalski, a milestone is something significantly enough to come home and tell your spouse about without boring him or her to death. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to tell your spouse that you tweaked your company brochure? Nah, but you definitely want to tell them if you launched your new website or if you reached a million dollar in annual revenue sales. Like You definitely want to tell those things. So think about your milestone. You want to something you have done that you want to tell somebody about. So 
you can establish what those things are. And that way you can also gauge your success, right? If you walk it out, you can say, this is success, this is success, this is success, and you'll have milestones. When I reach this, that's when I know I'm, I'm, I'm going toward the goal, right? And then number three is to better understand your competition. So in a business plan, you have a comparative analysis in your marketing plan. And what that looks like is you're doing a SWOT analysis. So SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, right? The S and the W, the strengths and weaknesses are internal, looking at your business, looking at yourself and saying, these are my strengths. These come easy. We do these with, with our eyes closed in our sleep. Like we can do these things. The other thing is what's your challenges, right? I'm not really fond of numbers. I love words more than numbers, which explains why I write a lot. But I know that because that is a weakness for me, I must have a team member who is strong in finances. That kind of mitigates the impact. So I know I have to have this person on my team in order to supplement so I can work in my genius while they work in theirs, right? So understanding that doing a SWOT analysis, looking at your competitors, looking at three to four competitors in your field, seeing what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. So what they're doing right are threats, right? Those things that threaten your business, you're getting customers. And so you know you have to implement those things because the market has already said, we accept these things. But the other part, the gravy part, is the O. The O stands for opportunities. So when you look at what other businesses are doing, what are they doing right? But then what are they doing wrong? Where are they missing it? That could be your competitive edge, like understanding fully what your competitors are. So that's what that is. So number three is to better understand your competition. Number four, to better understand your customer. Okay, y'all have heard me say this a million times. I have people that say, when I asked them, who is your target audience or who are you going to sell to? And they say, everybody, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody. And we know that's not true because we all have our variables and our, our preferences. And, you know, I'm not going to spend the night trying to buy a pair of Jordans. That's just not what I'm going to do unless it's for a grandchild or something. But normally, and they wouldn't even ask me to spend the day as their parents. But think about it. How many times do we think because people have feet, they all want a pair of shoes? Okay, they may want a pair of shoes, but they may not like your style of shoes, right? So even if you're selling something that's common as shoes, you still need to niche down. My friends, the Moors over in, um, I think they're in New York. The Moors said, Linda, the niches are in the, the, the riches are in the niches. So niching down and finding out who is truly your customer? Like understanding their demographics, understanding their psychographics, understanding their geographics. Like you understand more about your customer intimately. That way you're able to speak in language to them. And so we talk about the marketing plan and we talk about what how you're going to get your business out there. Because that is very important. If you're going to grow a business, you need to have customers. And, and the thing about it is rather than chase customers, the one and done, I'm talking about creating customer journeys where the customer comes with you and has a lifetime uh, value, where they're spending money with you, buying different products, and you're helping them grow while your business is growing. So to better understand your customers and why they buy, when they buy, like understanding their, their buying patterns and their buying habits, that's what a business plan will help you think that through. Another thing is, so you have these assumptions, right? And so you can enunciate the, the previous under, uh, unstated assumptions. What that means is the process of actually writing the business plan helps you to bring previously hidden assumptions to the foreground. By writing them down and assessing them, you can test them and you can even analyze them for their validity. So understanding that we think things like if this holds true, and if I do this, then the outcome should be that. Those assumptions that we have that while we're growing this business, certain things are all things remaining equal, right? So you can actually put those, test those assumptions. And then number six, 
is to assess the feasibility of your venture. Like every idea is not a good idea, but let me tell you. So I'm a business strategist. And so I've never met a bad idea. I've met some ideas that need a little tweaking. And so writing a business plan will help you think through, okay, this is a viable plan. And here's the thing. I had a customer and she thought that it, her customers should be the children, right? And I was like, well, the children aren't really buying. They are a part of her customers, like they're they're a part of her clients, and they should be included in her advertisement because they are the uh, the influencers that help their parents by saying, "Mom, Dad, I want this, that, and the other." So she she does need to consider them, but her avatar is the parents. Why? Because the parents cut the checks. CTC, your main avatar, your primary avatar needs to be the person who cuts the check. And so understanding that and understanding the feasibility of your business, will this thing float? You know, you sing that. Is this a good opportunity? Does it need tweaking? You know, thinking through when you're doing the process of writing your business plan, like you're researching your target market and you're 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 looking at the landscape and you're you know trying to get do your feasibility study to see is this a good idea? Because all ideas are not great ideas, right? But they may be ideas that need tweaking. And so you have to think it through in order to get to that. The next thing is to determine your financial needs. So in a business plan, you have different types of capital. You have startup capital, you have fixed uh, costs, and then you have variable. Now, there are three different ways, and those all three need to be in your business plan. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow night. And we're actually going to talk through the startup capital, the fixed costs, and the variables. We're going to talk about all of that. So getting to know what you what do you really need? Like a lot of people say, well, I need $25,000, but they don't have an itemized budget. And so why $25,000? Is that a key thing? Uh, some people may think they need a lot of money. And then if they sit down and did a budget and actually thought through the minimum valuable, uh, the minimum vi viable product. What that means is, what do you need to do to get to your first customer without the bells and whistles, right? Because we don't want to open a business with the bells and whistles and find out those are bells and whistles our customers don't want. So we create the minimum viable product. That's the least we can do to still give the quality and the value that we want to give, but doesn't have all the bells and whistles. Think about the iPhone. Think about Apple and how Apple sends you a stripped down phone and they're constantly giving you upgrades because those upgrades are based on customer data who says we would like our phone to do this, that, and the other. That's how you should think. Think about, you know, success leaves clue. So that's a great clue for you. The other thing is to attract investors. So I have people that want to get annual funds, uh, angel investors, or they want to get venture venture capitalists. If you go like people, I, everybody wants to be on Shark Tank. Everybody wants to be on Shark Tank. Everybody wants to be on the profit. Everybody wants to be on the elevator pitch, right? Everybody wants to be on these shows where they give money in in uh, in exchange for pieces of ownership. But did you know you're going to need a business plan for that? Like if you walk into any bank, any credit union, anywhere they're doing business and they're giving you money for your business, like a loan, a business loan, you need to have a business plan. Like they're going to ask you for a business plan. So if you're thinking about doing any of that kind of thing with funding investors, you're going to need a business plan because it has to make sense to them. And not only that, it has to make sense in order to be the basis for a financial proposal. You have to put it where they can understand it. And I tell you the part that most people don't put in there, the part that most people don't put in their business plan is the exit strategy. Ah, the exit strategy. When people are starting their business, they don't want to talk about closing, but that's the perfect time to talk about how do you plan to end this? Will you sell it? Will you retire from it? And it just dies. Like what happens next when you are no longer wanting to be in the business? Do you sell it and then make that money your retirement money? Or do you pass it off as, as an inheritance to your, your relatives? Think about that. And so that's in your business plan. We talk through that kind of stuff.
And then number t- uh, number 10, we're well, already up to 10, to reduce the risk of pursuing the wrong opportunity. Like I have had people, I've seen this over and over again, where people came into my class and their mind was set on this, oh, I'm going to start this great widget. And then we get in there and we start testing their idea and we start you know, having to go talk to customers and we have them start doing research and market research and competitors and looking. And then they're like, oh, wait a minute. That's not a good opportunity for me. Let me pivot over here and do this other thing. When you're in my class and I have I, my next class starts May the 24th. And let me know if you want information about it, because I'll start marketing for it soon. But when you are in class and you learn about business, business, you're going to have new ideas and you're going to learn whether that idea that you've been dreaming about and thinking about and obsessing about, you're going to learn whether that's a good opportunity or not. And if it's not, you're going to understand how to make the pivot because I'm going to teach you how to pivot. Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about the information that's in, like I have this robust, I mean, very robust business training that's 12 weeks that that dissects every section of business, right? I have it. And we we do deep dives into the numbers and deep dives into marketing because I need my business owners to understand how to market their business as well. So we do all that. So by by writing your business plan, you're going to get a chance to see whether this is worth pursuing or not. So if you come to my class, one of the guarantees is at the end of the class, you have a a business plan. You have a submittable business plan. If you do all the work, at the end, you have a submittable business plan. And then it's just $500. Like you can't buy a business plan for $500 in 2021. That's what we're doing. But I'll tell you about that later. So number 11, to force you to research and really know your market. How many people are just selling things and they have no idea what the market is saying. They don't know how many people are out there. They don't know whether what they're selling has a good uh, pr- projection or not. They don't know what it's doing on the national level, on the, the state level, or even on their local level. They don't know how many other people are selling what they are selling. They don't know any complementing services that are out there that they can do joint ventures and uh, collaborations with. Like they don't know anything about it. They're just down. I'm making money. I'm selling. I'm selling. I'm selling. Like they haven't took a deep dive to understand their industry. They're so detached from their industry. They're probably undercharging. They're doing one of two things. They're either overcharging or undercharging. And most times it's undercharging because when they first start their businesses, they think that's how I'm going to get customers. I just need to undercharge some people. And, and if I if I price it low, they will come. And that only works for, let me tell you, a very short period of time. So to force you to research and really get to know your market, like you need to know the market that you're in, the industry that you're in on a national, statewide and local level, and then to attract your employees and a management team. Like It's hard for you to hire people to do jobs when you don't even know what the jobs they are. You have no job descriptions. You don't have any reason. You don't have no what they'll be doing. Like you haven't figured all that out yet. So understanding that a business plan will help you to think through that. That's going to be number 12. Number 13 is to plot your course and focus your efforts. Like stop throwing things up against the wall to see if they fit. Actually have a plan and then work the plan right? It's more concentrated, more focused in your efforts. And the next thing, number 14 is if you want to do a partnership, your partner is going to want to know, okay, what, what about this business? What's going on? Because this is what I tell my clients and my students, if you wouldn't marry them, then don't partner with them. You need to know them intimately. You need to know their business acumen, the way they do business. You need to know how their books look. You need to know how their business is planned out. Like you need to know that they're not willy nilly. Today is orange, tomorrow is purple. That they, you know, <laughs> have this both bipolar uh, business sense that's going to drive you crazy before you do a partnership. So having a business plan will help any new attracted partners find you. Now the next thing is to position your brand. Like you want to be a brand and not just a, I mean, not just, you know, you want to become a household name. Like you think of any Coca-Cola sign everywhere you go in the world. If you see that sign, you know, that's Coca-Cola, that's Blue Cross. You know, these are, these are signs that, you know, that's all state. 
you want to be that type of a brand where when people see your logo, they know that's that. I know that brand. So building a brand and positioning that brand in the marketplace takes some thought. This doesn't happen by accident. Like I became the business plug simply because I had to build that as a brand. And so that's why people know me around the world today as the business plug, because it's a brand. I'm a brand. You're a brand. Your business is a brand. You have to build that so the world will know that you become a brand. Number 16 is to judge the success of your business. How will you gauge whether you're successful or not? Like if you stick to the plan and the plan actually works, then you can use that that information, like these milestones we were talking about, like you can gauge your success and you can see where you're headed so that you're not just falling off a cliff somewhere. You actually are intentional. There's an African proverb that says you can do more watering one plant than many. And what that means is being focused in this one thing and helping it to grow. It can help you do these other things you plan to do later. What I find is a lot of times, you know, entrepreneurs, we think, we think very differently, but some of us think we have to have 10 different things going at once in order to be a real business and haven't learned the beauty of the one. By getting down to one thing, perfecting that thing and becoming a subject matter expert at that one thing, man, and there, there's the power of one. There's all kinds of books about the one. So the ones who are successful will tell you that getting down to one thing, again, the riches are in the niches. So niching down. Another thing is like to judge your success. So we position our brand and then to judge the success of your business, to reposition your business, to deal with, um, to de reposition your business, to deal with the changes and conditions. Like, how do you know what to do when you're talking about, um, so COVID happened, how many businesses didn't understand what they were doing when COVID happened, right? So understanding that, like getting to know what to do when something out of the ordinary happens. How do you, business is cyclical. Like you have ups and downs, things change, things don't change. How do you get through all of that? So understanding that. And then to document your marketing plan. You have a marketing plan so you can think through how is how can I best present my business to the marketplace? I need to create a marketing plan. And so in a business plan, you will have a marketing plan. Like thinking through how you're going to do business. And number 19 is to understand and forecast your business staffing needs. How many people do you need? And what do you what will you have them doing once you get them? So understanding what that is, right? So that's a very important thing. And then last but not least, number 20, to uncover new opportunities. That's what we're talking about. So we've went through all those different things about the business plan. Hey, Susan. Hey, Susan. We went through all those things about the business plan and how you really need a business plan in 2020. So I said I was going to tell you about tomorrow. So tomorrow at six o'clock p.m., I am actually helping those of us who feel like we have the writers act. Some, some people are good writers. It's just they, didn't, they need to know what to write. So tomorrow at six o'clock Eastern, I am going to do a walkthrough of a business plan. We're going to cover all the different sections and then what goes in the different sections. Like we're going to do the whole thing. We're going all the way through it. And at the end of it, you're going to be able to have notes so you can finish your business plan. Like if you've started it already and you keep putting it back because it becomes overwhelming, I hear you. I get you. If you've bought one of those business plans in a box and now you're stuck, because, okay, I have the business plan in the box, but what do I do now? Okay, then I'm going to help you. That's what I'm doing tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. Because I want to make certain that if you need a business plan, that you can have a business plan. And so, hey, Susan, absolutely, honey, le learn your industry. Know what you're doing out here in these streets. I am, oh. My finance people are like, I, they're, they're about mad at me because I've been sending people to get PPP and these people don't even have financial statements. Like they've never filed business taxes. They've never done any of this stuff. And so I'm stopping and I'm saying, okay, let's, let's backtrack, let's backtrack and let's learn to do business well 
takes more than just selling something. Selling something is the the smallest part. Most interested, right? I won't take away from the value of selling stuff. If you don't sell anything, you're on business loan. But the thing about that is you have to know how to do business right and not just sell something. Another thing you can do on Facebook, I have, so if you're in the Chattanooga, Tennessee area, I have downloaded the City of Chattanooga's Business Information Guidebook. You can go to chattanooga.gov and get it, or you can join my group by answering those questions, and you can read it there, download it there, so that you can learn how to do business well in Chattanooga. If you're in any other city, then look for it. Like contact your city office, your city government office, and ask them if they have a book on how to do business with the city or how to do business in the city, because that's important. It's going to help us. We're going to do better out here in these business streets and not just be selling something. We're actually going to be learning how to do business the right way. Amen. Amen. Amen, Susan. We need to learn how to do business the right way. My financial people are so mad at me right now. They're like, girl, you sending us these people. And these people have never filed taxes, Linda. What are you doing? And I'm like, I didn't screen them. I just asked a question and anybody that needed help, I sent them forward. But I didn't screen them to see, have you filed your taxes? You know, do you have financial statements? Like, I didn't do any of that. I thought that they would do it. And, and uh oh, one of my one of my business people done signed on here. Hey, you are so welcome. That Chattanooga guidebook, that thing right there is going to free some people. They're going to learn how to do business and do business well. So that's what we're talking about today. I just really, really, really wanted to come on for a brief period of time to tell you why you need a business plan and to, to have you come join me. I've put the link in the description where you can buy your ticket. And tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern, it's going to start out as a Facebook Live, but I'm pushing it over to Zoom and we'll finish the evening in Zoom. And I will help you get through writing your business plan. Like what, what inspired me is I had someone who had purchased a, a business plan in a box and they were stuck. And so I you know, agreed to, 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 to walk through their business plan with them to show them where they could make some corrections. And they were ecstatic. They were like, oh, great. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. But yeah. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, that's one of my finance people, y'all. Like, if y'all need PPP, y'all go holler at my girl. But I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't screen them. I didn't screen these people and they came. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm going to make them mad at me. I'm going to have to take them out to dinner or something to, to, so that they'll still work with me in trying to get these people financial help. But if you're trying to get the PPP, if you're trying to build your business, if you're trying to write your business plan, like you need a business plan out here in these streets. If you're looking for funding, if you're trying to get grants, if you're trying to get government contracts, if you're trying to, I'm trying to think of all the reasons you need a business plan. You Anything about money, you need a business plan. Anything about, you know, being intentional in how you grow your business so that you're not just throwing things against the wall and trying to see what sticks. Like being intentionality is everything out here, especially in these COVID streets. Like the competition is fierce. Everybody got a business. Everybody, every, everybody open a business right now. So in order for you to stick out up and above what's out there, most of the businesses that are open are just selling something. They don't know what they're doing. They're out here doing all kinds of stuff. But if you want to be intentional and if you want to have a competitive edge, you really, really should invest in writing a your own business plan, which is the best way to have a business plan is to write your own, right? Write your own business plan. That's the number one way of doing it. But if by chance you're not able to write your own business plan, I do business plans. Like I've been doing them for about 20 years for family and friends free at first when I had my gravy job. But then when I opened my business in 2013, it became a part of my offering. So now I help people get business plans. I, I do that. So if you're interested in that, then yeah, <laughs> if you're interested in that, then reach out to me, get in my inbox so I can get you on schedule and we can talk about how we can get you a business plan written. I'll, I'll write it with your help. Like we'll, we'll go through the whole plan and you'll have the plan up and ready. But if you are good at writing it yourself, again, that's the best 
business plan is one that you can write yourself so you can articulate it to investors. You'll be able to articulate the ones I provide too. But if you do it, if you write the business plan yourself, it forces you to think on a level that you probably haven't considered. And that's the thing is to get you to think about your business intimately so that you know everything there is to know about your business so that you're not out here in these streets just selling something. You're actually a real operating business that has a better chance of longevity. That's what you want. You want to be out here more than just a little while. And so in order to do that, you need to think think through your business plan. My name is Linda Murray Buller. Every Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern, I come on with a business plugs mixer. Sometimes I have guests and sometimes it's just me. And we're just talking about business topics and other things of interest in order to make your Sunday a little bit brighter. So I hope you've gained something from today. And I hope, I hope, I hope that if you need me, you'll reach out to me in my inbox and we'll get you scheduled so that we can have a conversation to see how I can help you. It is my pleasure to serve you. I am a five-star business strategist located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where I plug businesses in every day, all day. You guys join me next week right here on LinkedIn and Facebook Live in the Business Plugs Mixer. I will see you guys then. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.